the uh, final game in the round robin of this uh, Samir group sponsored four nations tournament Pakistan against Sri Lanka from the Nairobi Gymkhana to decide really who will meet South Africa in uh, the final on Sunday it's all down to uh, run rates net run rates we understand now are uh, being used to calculate who's going to come second and third these are the games that have taken place so far in the tournament. Kenya played uh, Sri Lanka last Saturday to start the tournament off. Sri Lanka with an easy seven-wicket victory with 19 overs to spare. And then South Africa posted the highest score of the tournament, 321 for eight, a world record stand between Cullinan and Rhodes of 232 meant that Pakistan found the job too difficult. South Africa then lost a thrilling game, low-scoring game to Sri Lanka at the Nairobi Club on a wicket that turned appreciably. Sri Lanka winning that one by two wickets. And another thrilling game at the Aga Khan Sports Club. Kenya very nearly with a surprise victory over Pakistan who eventually won by four wickets and an awful lot to wicketkeeper Moen Khan. South Africa, another 300 uh, plus total. 305 for eight in 50 overs against Kenya yesterday. Kenya folding in the face of hostile quick bowling from Alan Donald and Brian McMillan. The uh, light cloud that uh, is covering Nairobi this morning is uh, breaking the sun is starting to come through temperature forecast for today up to 27 could be the warmest day of the week and 74 uh, percent humidity this is how things stand at the moment South Africa, they've played all their games, four points, with a net run rate of plus 1.53. Sri Lanka in second place. They've played 2-1-2, 1.43 there, net run rate. And Pakistan, if they win today, they've got to boost that net, net run rate by something like 1.7. It's an awesome task. Sri Lankan team won the toss. Arjuna Ranatunga invited Pakistan to bat first. Despite the feeling that this pitch is going to turn, I think uh, Ranatunga thinks he's going to turn from the word go. It's not going to make an awful lot of difference. The uh, two seamers, Chaminda Vas and Jeeva Silva, and uh, four spinners in that lineup. Pakistan's team, captained by Said Anwar for the second time this week, Wasim Akram having returned to Pakistan. And they're playing five batsmen, the keeper Moen, and uh, additional bowling resources from Azar Mahmood. <laughs> Pakistan's opening batsman. Said Anwar and Salim Elahi. <laughs> Intriguing contest, Ravi. Said really needs to lead his side to an emphatic victory if Pakistan are going to qualify for the final. That's right, uh, Paul. Good morning to all our viewers. Uh, Pakistan have to score a comprehensive victory here if they are to make it to the finals. And the man who can do it for them. Saeed Anwar, very impressive record, 3,500 runs in one-day internationals. That's an average just over 36, 131 against uh, the West Indies, his career best. Sri Lanka winning the toss today and uh, sending Pakistan into bat. Paul Allett during his pitch report said that uh, there will be some help for the spinners. There's no doubt about that because uh, it did look pretty rough, the surface. And there was a little bit of moisture as well, so one won't be surprised if there is some uh, help for the spinners very early in the game. 
Sanjeev Silva will uh, bowl the first over of the morning. Two for 27 in this tournament against uh, Kenya, his best. Just three matches uh, for him in his career. He'll be bowling to Said Anwar. All set then for the first ball of the last game in this uh, round-robin series of matches. Sanjeeva Silva from uh, the Forest Road end to Said Anwar. And uh, Pakistan underway from the first ball. Signal wide by umpire Ian Robertson. And also I think another reason why uh, Sri Lanka may have chosen to field first is that they know that Pakistan will be looking uh, for a huge score here. And in trying to get that, maybe they might make a few mistakes. As a result of which, uh, they might lose wickets quickly. There are all sorts of pressures on uh, players in this one-day tournament, one-day cricket in general. It's uh, always important to win, but um, increasingly important to win well and maintain a positive run rate, net run rate. Once you get behind in that, it's very difficult to make up. First runs off the bat. Saramwa picking up a single down to fine leg. Sally Milahi. 19 years of age played 13 games already and averaging very nearly 35 with 350s and 100 I think from Sri Lanka's point of view they shouldn't be too worried about all these calculations they should just go out there and try and win the game they're unbeaten in this tournament so far. Yeah, you're quite right, Ravi. It's uh, always the side that's chasing, looking to play catch-up cricket that has to worry about calculations. Sri Lanka really in the box seat with four points under their belt already. Just have to go out and win the game. As always, a very relaxed Sri Lankan captain. Got to be close. It did all the right things, that. Just started to swing into the right-hander, who didn't make a big stride forward. Well, this has to be very close. Interesting to see if this one pitched in line. Yes, it did. And that has to be close. Unless he's got any bat on it, he's not playing uh, too far forward. I think the bowler should be disappointed not getting that decision in his favor. Again, a little bit of late in swing from the Silva. He's had a good tournament. Well, he's been a good find for Sri Lanka. They've been looking for a medium pace for quite some time. And Silva looks a promising cricketer. Gets the ball to move both ways. Ian Robinson. From Zimbabwe, the Empire at the Forest Road end. And Russell Tiffin, the Empire at Square Leg, also from Zimbabwe. Ranatunga in the gully. Little problem earlier this morning with the uh, 15 metre circle placement and the ground staff had got it slightly wrong they placed those uh, close catching discs or the area where the close catches have to be at 20 meters rather than 15 so hastily rearranged oh! good opening over from uh, Sanjeeva Silva two without loss Pakistan Anything short is uh, dispatched with ease by Saeed. He's pulled that in front of Square. It's running away the outfield very quick. And that's the first boundary of the morning. 
Well, after he played that first delivery in the over, he was practicing that shot. And he got an opportunity here to uh, get it into play. Gets into nice position, had enough time to play it in front of square and got the first boundary for Pakistan. Such an easy paced wicket, he could pull it even off the front foot. And again flicked away, he's timed that beautifully. Looked to play it with a cross bat in the end because the ball didn't bounce quite as much as he thought. He uh, straightened the bat and flicked it away behind square for a second successive boundary. And this is one of his strengths, Saeed Anwar. He's a lovely timer of the ball. This one drifting towards leg stump. He gets into good position and uh, plays it behind square. No chance for the man at fine leg. Glorious. Absolutely glorious. Beautiful shot this band, but he just leaned into it and played through the line. And again, timed it magnificently. Standing up tall, just playing through the line and finding the gap through extra cover. He's repeated it, and that is a glorious shot as well. A little bit fuller this time, but still beautifully straight back for four. Crowd getting a little noisy as someone decides to take the flag around for Pakistan, and my word, they can raise it high now with that shot over the top of uh, Long On. That's a lovely shot indeed. Well, find way to bring up the 50. Here, down the track comes the Pakistan captain. Good use of his feet. And going through with the shot and hitting it over mid on for four. So the run rate pretty good at this moment. Doing well. Crowd getting a little noisy as someone decides to take the flag around for Pakistan and my word they can raise it high now with that shot over the top of uh, Long On. That's a lovely shot indeed. Well, find way to bring up the 50. A little bit of air here. Down the track comes the Pakistan captain. Good use of his feet. And going through with the shot and hitting it over mid on for four. Holding out originally. Burma 3D. He's going to get one over the top. I think this one whipped him away. There's six runs. What a, what a way to open your account. That's not too bad at all. So Afridi gets after the uh, spinner, Damasina. Hoiks it away over mid-wicket. That's an unbelievable shot. Second ball in. There he goes again. My word, is is unbelievable. That's another six for him. And uh, up it goes. That's his third six since he's been at the crease. Faced 11 balls. And his three is hit for six and one is hit for a four. And he really is enjoying this, this young man. And that is a long, long six. It's the longest part of the, the ground down there on the uh, long off boundary. Here he goes again, up in the air, and right out of the ground. That's over the top of the pavilion, gone. A huge hit. That's into the car park, down there by the production van, I should think. My word. The crowd are enjoying this. Sally the Afridi is enjoying it. Drags it from outside off some, gets his feet coming right down to it, right up over the top of the uh, mid-wicket boundary. Huge hit. And there's uh, no point chasing that. Six more. 
Hundreds up for Pakistan in just 13 overs and one ball. Stunning hitting by Afridi. First 50 off 53 balls. That look at that second 50 off just 27 deliveries. Mainly due to Shahid Afridi, who is 37 not out now. Flatter, faster, and uh, hit further and higher. Six more. Spectacular stuff from uh, the Pakistanis. And Freedy's just got license to hit. The problem now for Jaya Sarir is that he's bowled it as probably as fast as he can and as flat as he can. And he's and the Freedy's still got underneath the ball and got enough uh, loft on it to get it flat and straight for six. Four of those sixes through uh, mid on, one over long off. Full toss, that's going to be six. No question about it. 50 partnerships up. The Freedies 50 has come off 18 balls, just one ball slower than the world record held by Sanaf Jaisaria. Six, six, two, six. Gone through for four. Brave effort by uh, Midoff to try and stop that ball. That was a glorious shark fall. Have you ever seen anything like this, Chandrakan? Yeah. Well, it looks to be a very good striker of the ball. That's an enormous blow. It's another six. No, it's not, it's four this time. So three sixes, two fours, and a two from the over. 28 off that 14th over, 122 for one, Pakistan. So just four off the over, a good one from Merlitharan. 15 overs gone, 126 for one. One twenty six for one, fifteen overs gone. It's got to be uh, one of the highest scores off the first fifteen overs in uh, limited overs cricket. Monstrously spectacular from uh, Afridi. 59 not out, look at that figure on the right, just 20 balls faced. Saeed Anwar, his captain, 38 from 37 and a runner ball at the start of the innings, that's pretty good as well. Paled into insignificance beside Afridi's innings. 126 for one from just 94 balls, Pakistan. taking drinks with uh, those two partnerships 60 for the first wicket from 61 balls that was good enough 66 unbroken for the second wicket in just 30 deliveries in 24 minutes between Anwar and Afridi and the bowling figures just uh, starting to look a little ragged uh, Sarir will want to forget those one over for 28 more or less than, uh, with a semblance of order one over for four the only bright spot for Sri Lanka this morning Lahi caught Muralitharan, bowled Dharmasena for 23 when the score was on 60.
picked out the man at uh, deep mid wicket. That's it, that's it, good stuff. Well, that's the rear is uh, continuing from the city end. I'll show you the end of uh, Elahi. And the Freedy, well, he's gone into his shell, he's blocked one and uh, attempted to paddle that away. It's a leg by there. Well, this is a tremendous performance from uh, Pakistanis uh, so far. Well, the only way they can get into the final, uh, Chandra, is to score in excess of 300 and then bowl Sri Lanka out cheaply. Freedy's come down the track, the field's out. But uh, you need fielders in the car park when Afridi's batting. That's his 8-6. Children being kept busy on the perimeter of the ground. This isn't slogging, this is uh, cultured and quality hitting from Afridi. Majority of his shots have been hit straight. He's kept his head down, watched the ball all the way onto the bat and hit them with enormous power. And again. Glorious shot, Paul. You see this uh, occasionally, you see the odd shot come off like this. But to sustain it and hit nine sixes in the period of just 24 balls is uh, quite exceptional. I would love to see him uh, batting against the medium pacer uh, uh, at the moment. Uh, <laughs> ball, the way he's going now, after all the spinners. Well, he's hammered the spinners. Jasserer has come in for some dreadful tap. He's only bowled eight deliveries. He's gone for 40. No ball. It's just that's a no ball to compound the felony. So Muralitharan to a freedy. Huge turn. Good shot. He just waited for that. Watched it turn into him and played uh, an extremely cultured square cut for four. <laughs> Clubbed away, it's four more. Huge gap at mid wicket. There's a man out at deep backward square and a man out at deep long on and they're probably the best part of 100 uh, metres between them as Afridi finds the gap. <laughs> you think he, he's got time to just sort of uh, take stock and um, block his way to 100 really. If he gets a runner ball, he's still there in under 50 yeah. deliveries. Yeah, he's done... He's done a job for his team, and now he's looking for his own hundred. And Saeed Amwar's in on the act. Extremely risky player. Down the track he comes, and this has gone a long way. Another six. These are not hits. These are Scud missiles. the track, opens his shoulders, and yet another scud. And this is another one, even bigger, over mid-wicket and out of the ground. He's moved to 95, and so far he's had a party. He's got a single. On the onside, that's a rare sight when Afridi has been there. Said Anwar wants the second and comes back. Good running by the Pakistan captain. Guru Singh a little slow in coming to the ball there, and Said Anwar quick to spot it. Run that first run hard. 
and came back comfortably for the second. So he's moved to 97. It's taken him only 36 balls, the world record set by Jay Surya in 48 balls. Can he get it? And he swept it away. This should be the world record. Saeed Afridi has got the fastest 100 in one day international cricket. It's taken him only 37 balls. And he set this Nairobi Gymkhana ground ablaze. Fantastic innings for the young man, considering it's his first knock in one day international cricket. Good, intelligent batting by him to paddle that one around the corner to bring up the fastest 100 in one day international cricket. Some achievement for a man playing just his first knock in the big game. Look at those statistics. And that's Saeed Anwar's 50. He's looked pedestrian in comparison to Afridi, but it's been a fine knock by the Pakistan captain. He's been talking to Saeed Afridi all the way. Up. This could go straight to the man at long on. Yes, taken by him. Yeah, the end of a fantastic innings by young Saeed Afridi. Caught by Murlidharan in the deep of Silva. But he's done the job for his country. Coming in at number three, he set the stands alight. The fastest hundred in one day international cricket. One of the great innings has just come to an end. Picks this one up. This goes straight down the throat of the fielder at long on and a delighted Sri Lankan contingent. They knew they had to see the back of this man. 102 in just 40 balls in 51 minutes. Sheer entertainment. 186 for two the score. Sanity most certainly will return to the proceedings now when Ramiz Raja comes to the crease. Lots of experience, 4,800 runs in uh, one-day international cricket, close to the 5,000-run mark. 119 not out against New Zealand, his highest. Right. By the Empire, rightly so. Shout for leg before here. Saeed Anwar had got that front foot way down the track. <laughs> well, this is a good time for Sri Lanka to get back into the game. Got a new batsman at the crease. Try and keep him as much as possible on the strike. Didn't get too many runs in the first game, Ramiz Raja, and this one turning a long way from Durmasena. This is beautifully played by Anwar. This is good, skillful cricket by the Pakistan captain. The man at fine leg was up in the circle. And Anwar chooses a spot here nicely, waits on it and plays it very late. Just helps it along, using the pace of the ball and getting the placement absolutely right. So that brings up the Pakistan 200. That single has taken them just 23 overs, just what the doctor ordered for Pakistan when they were put into bat. They needed a blazing start and they've got that. Thanks to that innings from that young man, 21-year-old, Saeed Afridi breaking the world record for the fastest hundred today and whilst he was there you could see third 50 of just 23 balls the second one of 27 balls swung away by Ramesh this will go all the way to the fence he's found the gap on the onside
With eight wickets in hand, uh, Ramiz can afford to take risks. Pakistan have crossed the 200 mark. They need to carry on, and this is beautifully played. Again, waiting on it late. Down the track comes Ramiz, goes in the air, and could be caught at mid-on. Yes, he is by Guru Singh on the second attempt. Looking to clear the infield here. Not quite getting hold of it. And in the end, a very good catch by Guru Singh. Not to the pitch of the ball, hitting it in the air. Guru Singh are doing a splendid job here to catch it on the second attempt, one-handed. So Pakistan lose their third wicket, that of Ramiz Raja, 207 runs on the board. So Pakistan's most experienced player in one-day international comes out to the middle, Salim Malik to join his captain. Heaps of experience for him. Over 6,000 runs at an average of 33.5. 102 against India and Sharjah his best. He'll be on strike to... Mutaya Mulitaran, the Vice President of the Sri Lankan Cricket Board has just left us, joined by the South African Captain Hansi Cronier. Uh, if you get wickets in hand in, in, the, uh, in the last 10 overs, which we are planning to do anyway, if you got wickets in our hand for the last 10 overs, we can go to town. You can go to town, you could get up to 400. The moment, 261 for three from 35. Shot. It's a good shot by Saeed Amwal. So it's going to beat Guru Singha to the deep square leg boundary. And that takes Saeed Amwal through to his century. It's his ninth in one day international cricket. And it's been a marvellous performance, somewhat overshadowed by uh, Shahid Afridi's innings of 100. But uh, a fine innings in its own right. A very sensible as well. Down the track this time. And hit high and hard. Straight back over the side screen for six. Forty overs gone, 294 for three. Last ball of the uh, 40th over. Launched high and uh, handsomely back over. The sight screen for six. batsman left back in the hut there for Pakistan, Ahmed and uh, Khan. Both can have a go. And also, of course, Yunus is there as well. He's known, been known to put back to ball pretty rapidly and very late in the innings. Gave himself a lot of room, went outside the leg stump and then the ball just went away from him. This one didn't. This one's going to go away for four. If it's not. Good piece of fielding down there on the mid-wicket boundary. Russian Mahanama getting a hand down on that. That's a fine piece of fielding. Ball's bouncing quite a bit out there. That's high. And it's up to Russian Mahanama again. And he's held on to it. Said Amwar, the Pakistan captain, perishes with the score 299 for three. Attempting to heave this over the leg side. All he does is find the hands of Burma Hanuma. Going to hit to uh, Murlikman across the line there. Oh, it was a tricky shot with the ball turning as much as it is. And Mahanama takes the catch. 115 side Anwar, brilliant innings. 299 for four, Pakistan. And exactly the man the fielding side uh, want to see coming in. At 2.99 for four, Ijaz Ahmed. 
144 matches. He's at the non-striker's end. Uh, Salim Malik goes for the big hit and gets four. As the ball scutters through underneath the man at deep long on. Now Messina. Which is though Malik's going to take charge now. He was allowing Saeed Anwar to uh, play all the shots. And as soon as uh, Anwar's been dismissed, Malik takes on the mantle of attacking batsman. 6.50, 300 up, off just 51 balls. Four more. Swept away fine. being brought back into the attack most of the bowlers expensive in fact all the bowlers only they run 10 overs two for 70 73 doesn't happen often going at over seven runs per over jay surya six overs for 66 and he's been brought back into the attack having had 43 knocked off his first two he's asking again Pakistan supporters are saying show the green but I tell you what I think there could be some red here there could be some red here he could be on his way well no question about that he's gone his leg was in the air when Kali Vitarna took out the bills Clearly showing there that his leg was in the air, so Pakistan lose their fifth wicket with 314 runs on the board. So Moin Khan comes in, 50 matches, and uh, a good keeper as well, this man. Aggressive little batsman as well. Played that match winning knock in the last game against Kenya, when Pakistan were in uh, deep trouble at one stage. Well, to read that with the batsman and just lay the bat on it. Pakistan from here on score to run a ball, they will cross that 350 mark. This is a magnificent shot from Malik. Getting inside the line of the ball and uh, picking it up over extra cover and in the gap on the offside for four more runs beautifully played that's what Pakistan want a boundary every over and then if they can pick up their ones and twos Second. that's a fine catch very hard coming very quickly at him the captain takes a great catch Ranatunga just above his head only a short man anyway and uh, driven straight at him, superb catch. Again looking to hit this one over the cover fielder. Salim Malik not quite getting hold of this. Getting it right at the end of the bat and Arjuna Ranatunga making no mistake. So Pakistan lose the sixth wicket with 322 runs on the board. So Waka Yunus gets runs in a hurry and uh, got a good eye and he's very very strong across the shoulders this man in fact uh Rav and i were discussing just that this morning as pakistan could do with a few big hits from him looking for the second run here moin and getting it comfortably pakistan ideally needed this stage is a nice little partnership here between Yunus and moin a bit high on the bat but uh, ran it down for two there he goes a big one that could do, go past the field it's gone well past the field but he's out of the field and just what pakistan wanted this stage a couple of big hits from Yunus. he's obliged them with one
powerful man, Bakar Yunus. He really gets stuck into this one. And clears the mid-on fence quite comfortably. And a flurry of sixes here today. Interesting when you sit here, Ravi, and you hear all the discussions going on in your headphones, and you realize so that one's going up in the air. Should be down someone's throat. It is indeed. Lockhart Yunus taking a big swing at this one down the leg side. Not quite getting hold of it. The ball going high in the air. And there is a man there, deep mid-wicket, Dharmasena. Keeps his eyes on the ball and takes the catch comfortably with both hands. So the seventh Pakistan wicket gone, 335 runs on the board. We look for two here. The new man will have to hurry and he's gone. Cannot make his ground as he came back for the second run. So Azhar Mahmood is dismissed without even facing a ball. Masena again quickly into the act. Running in quickly, uh, picking up nicely and a good throw to follow. So Surya collecting, taking off the bales with the batsman not even in the frame. So eight wickets gone for Pakistan, 335 runs on the board. So the new bats from the crease, and uh, they could have gone anywhere, as it is, there'll be runs, just the one in fact, and that's the 46 over, four overs to go, 3-3-7 three, three, for eight. And funny enough, I think we're going to see that young world record holder turn his arm over for a bit as well, aren't we, Ravi? Because he did that the other day, didn't he, against uh, Kenya, very well, I thought. Yes, he did bowl well, and uh, this wicket will give him something. Uh, might get the odd ball to turn here. And have the other one that keeps low as well. So 49 overs gone, Pakistan, 361 for 8. So just six more balls left in the Pakistan innings. And this is really a good total, and it really does mean that we'll have to get the old calculators out come uh, lunchtime, just to see what the restriction would be needed for Pakistan to keep Sri Lanka two. Well, there it is. That's the, uh, the tail of the... Uh, Pakistan innings. Anwar, great knock by him for a captain as of 120 balls. He just kept being there no matter who came to the crease. Down the leg side. The 362. Five balls left. Jazz rear. We might see a little bit more of him this afternoon as well, I was thinking, Ravi. Well, he'll have to uh, go for Sri Lanka. Well, he still currently holds the fastest 50. Does Jay Saria. By that one ball, he's scored 50 off of 17 deliveries. So I think he'll uh, put the old foot on the gas this afternoon, if that's what their intention is to go after it. No doubt about that. He's delivering a good score from him, as well as a couple of other batsmen if they are to stay in the hunt to reach the final. That's right up in the air, deep down on the boundary. That is a superb test. Looks like Durham Cena down there. Well, the ball is following him, and this is a magnificent effort. Terrific outfield catch this. Moen Khan 
wanting to hit the ball out of the ground. Playing a little too early here, not to the pitch of the ball. The ball goes high in the air and have a look at Dharmasena. He has a long way to run. He keeps his eyes on the ball. And even whilst he's falling, make sure that he's got the ball in his hands. Terrific outfielder for that. As Pakistan lose their ninth wicket for 364. Shad Nazir is the uh, new man at the crease. Very impressive Pakistan performance. There's two balls remaining, so they've ensured that uh, they've batted out the full 50 overs. That's if they play this delivery. Swings at this one and in the gap. This could go all the way to the fence. It's a good strike from young Shahid Nazir. So just one ball to come and one run short of the 370 mark and that is an incredible score in one day cricket. That's a, a mammoth task for Sri Lanka to overhaul it. And uh, what they need to be looking at of course is the other thing of do they just go for the runs required to get themselves into the final. So that's the 370, they're going for a quick second and they get home. So 371 for nine in 50 overs and that really is Ravi an incredible task ahead for Sri Lanka magnificent effort this by Pakistan they paced the innings uh, brilliantly Sai Dunwar leading uh, the way from the front playing a captain's knock of 115 held the Pakistan innings together and then we saw that uh, scintillating knock in the middle from uh, Sai Afridi we had the fastest 100 in one-day cricket, 100 coming off just 40 balls. And in the end, it was that effort that allowed Pakistan to reach this mammoth score of 371. So a crowd here at the Jim Khanna Club. Great Pakistan support. And uh, I might add as well, tremendous amount of Sri Lankan support as well at the ground. So everything to go for this afternoon. Well, the outstanding statistic there, 102 and just 40 balls. He hit 11 sixes in that knock, equaling the world record, and 102 being the fastest one day 100. Said Anwar doing a splendid job there, 115 and only 120 balls. And Salim Malik playing a useful knock too in the middle of the innings, 43 and only 54 balls. See the partnership there between uh, Said Anwar and Afridi. Realizing 126 runs and it came off only 61 balls in 51 minutes. Blazing stuff. Well, that's the sad tale of woe if you were a bowler out there this up this morning. And Silver and Vass not really doing too much, not being able to do too much. And everyone thought, well, maybe it's the spinner's day. They're going to have to get this ball to turn somewhat. But my word, Jazz Saria had some uh, 43 runs knocked off his first two overs and eventually picking up three wickets for total endurance i think at the end of it all so there it is that's the sad tale of woe sri lanka requires 372 runs to win this game and uh, to get through to the final they need to score over 280 i would suggest <laughs> October issue of Car Magazine, we track test Ferrari's new 550 Maranello. Let five wagons roll in our special consumer report. Take an in-depth look at Toyota's latest Corolla and road test BMW's powerful new 528i. All this and more in the October issue of Car, on sale now.
Welcome back to the Nairobi Gymkhana. Pakistan have posted a mammoth 371 for nine off their 50 overs, due largely to Shahid Afridi with his 102 off 40 balls. That's a new world record in one-day international cricket. 11 sixes in that innings. Saeed Anwar also got 100. So that uh, huge total of 371 for nine means obviously that Sri Lanka need 372 to win the match, but that is not the total that uh, they have in their minds at the moment. If they get to 287, then uh, Sri Lanka will have done enough to reach the final. So they can uh, lose this game quite comfortably, but still qualify for the final on Sunday. So 287 is the figure that Sri Lanka will be aiming for. So quite an uphill task ahead for Sri Lanka. And, uh, and probably they just need to settle in. Not too long, get their heads down. And these two fellows are renowned for getting on with the game anyway. Jaya Saria, look at that, 140 against New Zealand and holds the uh, one day record for the fastest 50 of the 17 balls and he himself had a tremendous amount of runs knocked off of his couple of overs when he was bowling to this young man Afridi he had 43 runs knocked off his two first two overs so maybe he has good intentions here for Sri Lanka's point of view Okay, Yunus is the bowler for Pakistan he has a um habit really of going for runs early in his spell a better bowler with the old ball in only in one day cricket but uh, he'll have his work cut out today as Janasaria and Kalawitharana attempt to uh, mount the challenge to get 287 initially to the uh, strike end 57 matches he's played in he's also scored 100 in one day internationals this time against Kenya of course that was in the earlier match played at Nairobi and that was his first 100 he drags him from outside the off stump doesn't get it too well but they get a single well, the additional problem that the Sri Lankans all have here is that this pitch is uh, not coming on to the bat. There's not as much pace in it now as there was perhaps even earlier in the day. Another reason why I think maybe uh, Sri Lanka could have been better served by batting first in this game. Well, it's easy to say that in hindsight. The ball is going to turn more. The bounce is going to become more unpredictable, I think, on this surface. Also, Paul, I think at the end of the day, you put 260, 270 on the board, which is what Sri Lanka are going to get a little bit more than that to uh, get themselves through the final. You get that on the board, it certainly means that you start getting the calculators out in Pakistan and realise then they'd have to score 350, 360. It's almost an insurmountable task that they would find themselves. It's all psychological at that stage, isn't it? Well, yeah, if, you, if uh, Sri Lanka had batted first and got, uh, say they'd got that 287 or whatever, then Pakistan would have had to beat them with overs to spare um, in order to, to get past. That would have been no easy task. So uh, there it is, summed up for you. Need to restrict Sri Lanka to less than 287 to reach the final. away by Jaisaraya. Two runs, not quite getting to the boundary. Mm. 
Sri Lanka 368 runs to win. We believe they need to get 287 to reach the final. We fail to get confirmation from the match referee over this. Seems somewhat strange. It's out. Jaisar is gone. Wakayunis is delighted. It's just the start that Pakistan wanted. And the Pakistan players are absolutely delighted. Jasaria, no option but to try and chase anything. Got it high on the bat, the ball may have stopped on him a little bit. Nazir takes the catch. Jasaria goes for two. Sri Lanka four for one. Singer just has the one ball to face of this uh, Waka Yunus Oval. And uh, he's got plenty of runs to his name. He's a very experienced player. 2250s and 200s. And they need one from him today, a big 100. Outside the off stump, they could be called a wide. Indeed, it has been. the stumps is driving it across the, the left-handed batsman with a pace far too wide in the one-day game there is crowd in total anticipation of an afternoon's cricket match here that really will be or could be setting this Gymkhana club alight good ball Pass for it, look at the bat on that. Good appeal there from Wakar. And the ball did all the right things. It's just uh, swinging into Gurusina, pitching on off stuff. It's a pretty good shout because he's not got a good stride in. May have been a little bit of inside edge, although he looked late on it as well, but uh, no matter. The decision was not out from Russell Tiffin. And Wakar Yunis. And one success to his uh, name in the first over, Jaya Saraya, holding out to Shahid Nazir at mid-off. Delight on all the Pakistan faces. encouragement now this young man the bowler well it's a poor ball would have been a wide had uh, Kalawitharana missed it it's a free hit just helping it away down the leg side fine legs up as we mentioned he's at leg slip there's a man at deep backward square but no chance of stopping that and couldn't might, might not be any chance of stopping that either unless you're in the crowd leg six Massive blow from Kalawitharana. It's the way the Sri Lankans play. They can lose early wickets, but they still go out and try to score as many as they can off the first 15 overs. Waiting for that, Kalawitharana. Saw him dispatch Alan Donald earlier in the week over square leg for six. That was a massive blow over mid-wicket. And here comes another. Just one bounce. They could have had inside the boundary, yes. In fact, the ball just bouncing inside the boundary rope there. Kalawitharana just setting himself. Anything uh, that length 
just fractionally short he's going to try and swing away on the leg side there's only one man out on the leg side boundary and he's back with a square so he took that away hanging down the leg side or straying leg side put that away very quickly indeed Oh, a ball from Wakar as well. I think Kinnotarana was aiming that mid-onish initially. Almost through the stroke before he got a big, thick inside edge on it. They all count. It's four more to the Sri Lankan total. Huge appeal. Russell Tiffin is unmoved. No, he's not. He's thought uh, for about a minute and a half and then decided to give Kalawitharana out. Caught behind down the leg side. And Waka has done the job for Pakistan. Russell Tiffin thought for an age about this. Quite clearly off the glove. He must have been giving the batsman time to walk, I think, but a good decision in the end. Wakar's gone through about four appeals. Kalawitharana gone for 19, 26 for two in the third over, Sri Lanka. Aravinda the silver, next batsman at the crease because of the dismissal of uh, Kalawitharana uh, for 19. And it was the fifth ball of the over. Oh, word, really he has got a lot of runs in his life, hasn't he? Great little player, this. Yeah, there's no way Aravinda De Silva will play any differently. He'll go out and uh, take the attack to the Pakistanis. Sri Lankans have uh, adopted this policy of playing seven batsmen. If they lose too early on, they still carry on in the same attacking vein. One ball left in the third over. It was Aravinda that uh, played such a marvellous innings in the World Cup semi-final against India when uh, Sri Lanka lost two wickets in the first over. Aravinda came in and uh, as if nothing had happened, scorched his way past 50. It's the end of Wakunis' like, second over. Two wickets he's got. Sri Lanka are 26 for two after three. Oh, just what they wanted, Pakistan. Gurusinghe just playing all over the place for that. And that was a little quicker too. Three wickets for Wakar, the third of which helped on for middle stump by the inside edge of Gurusina's bat. And Sri Lanka really in trouble now. Dragged it on from way outside off stump. Head in the air. And Wakar is absolutely delighted. Gurusina goes for one, 27 for three in five, Sri Lanka. Pickets to have fallen so far. As Roshan Mahanama comes out to the middle, 151 matches for him, close to 4,000 runs in uh, one day international cricket. 119 versus Zimbabwe, his best. And he'll be on strike to Wakar Yunus with his tail up. Sagunka Guru Singer, the last batsman to be dismissed. Looking to smash this one through the covers. Getting an inside edge and having his stump shattered. That's the target, huge target set uh, for the Sri Lankans by the Pakistanis. 372 to get. Terrific Pakistan performance that to reach that score.
came out today with a faint hope of reaching the final. Now look to be the favourites. Loud shout for leg before. Up goes the umpire's finger. Eunice has struck again. And the Sri Lankan innings in disarray. Having lost their fourth wicket now. Two in the over for Wakar Yunus. Mahanama has the habit of coming across the stumps with his pads. Just striking him around middle and leg stump. The judge leg before by the umpire. Four wickets gone, 27 runs on the board. the Sri Lankan captain Arjuna Ranatunga with the side in deep trouble four wickets down for 27 over 5,000 runs in one day internationals 200s and 33.50s the last man to go was uh, Roshan Mahanama to play across the line it was a judge leg before umpire Russell Tiffin a little unfortunate there that would have uh, maybe missed leg stump <laughs> oh, it's signaled by the umpire there we saw Alan Donald picking up six wickets yesterday in the game against Kenya Wakar already has four and seven overs remaining Every opportunity for him here to get into the record books. It's been quite a venue, this uh, Nairobi Gymkhana. We have the chairman of the organizing committee and the chairman of the Nairobi Gymkhana club, Sharad Guy, sitting with us. Sharad, big day for Nairobi Gymkhana. You bet. It is certainly a big day, and I'm sure Nairobi Gymkhana will be remembered as a venue for records. Especially the, the quick 100, scored by a freely. That will be remembered for a long time, not even here in the rest of the world. would. It's a one-day international world record. 287, the target for them to reach the final. And this is pulled away by De Silva. Magnificently over square leg for six. This shot is a De Silva trademark. So quick to pick up the length. He loves playing the shot and times this one beautifully. Goes way over square leg for six. And driven nicely this time. He finds a gap through the covers. This should be four runs. Shot this by Ranatunga, hit on the up and the gap between mid off and cover. And this time he's pulled it on the onside for four more. Good over this for Sri Lanka. Amazing shot by De Silva. It's not all that short. He's picked it up so quickly and hoisted it over mid wicket. One bounce and into the fence. And he's gone again. And this time over square leg for his second six. So two boundaries and a six in this over for the little Sri Lankan. Again, magnificently picked up. He's timed this one well and over the square leg fence. That's the second six he's hit in that area. 
and this will get the Sri Lankan supporters going. Pulled away by De Silva. We've seen him playing that shot on quite a few occasions already in this innings. He does so and he gets another boundary. Gets into lovely position as he pulls this one on the onside in front of square. Oh, this is... You won't see many better shots played here today than this one. Magnificent stroke from De Silva. He just stood up tall here and blasted this through the offside. Driven by Ranatunga this time, beautifully through the covers for four. Just what Sri Lanka need. Runs coming in at both ends. Beautifully played. Good balance, still head, and a nice follow through. Nazir again. Played away by Ranatunga, there's a man, a third man, and there's a misfield, and the ball crosses over the fence. With the pressure being put on the Pakistani fielders. Played away to third man by Ranatunga, Azar Mahmood, the fielder, just takes his eyes off the ball, lifts his head, and the ball... Uh, goes over the line. Sri Lankans won't mind that, so it's two boundaries and two balls for the Sri Lankan captain. Magnificent stuff. This is a glorious shot through the covers. Magnificent stuff, this. De Silva not allowing the pressure to get to him. Just reeling off some fabulous shots. And smashed through the covers again. This time even straight up. Magnificent stuff this from De Silva. Again hit on the up wide of Vakar Yunus at mid-off. And a lovely way to end the over. 13 overs gone. Sri Lanka 95 for four. So he's going along... Uh, at a nice pace, De Silva 44 and only 31 deliveries. Ranatunga giving him good company, scoring at uh, more than a runner ball. Big sweep away. There is a man down there. Oh dear, beat him. The bounce beat him. Four runs. So the 100 coming up. One run to go. Sweeps it away. That really should have been fielded by Nazir. He makes his way in and then suddenly a, an awkward bounce for him, but he beats him on the bounce and through for four. Manatunga saying thank you. Oh my word, that's inside edge onto pad, otherwise that would have been all over and done with. My word, a quicker ball coming through from Mushtak. Pushes it through and gets a little bit of spin and height. Slams it onto his leg. See that quite plainly. And this one goes away. Once again. Through the square. Square to the wicket. And that brings 100 up. Sri Lankan's flag start to move again in the crowd. They've been a little bit still during the course of the morning period. And particularly during the course of the early part of this innings when they lost uh, two, four wickets for 27. 14 overs gone, 103 for four. Sri Lanka need to get into the final. And any more of that, they'll be getting them quite quickly. That was a shocking ball for Malik, there's no doubt about that. It was short, 
was coming up, it was lifting, it was everything, everything that the Silva would love to have put on a plate for him. And he's a very aggressive batsman indeed. And then they had the pleasure of watching him a couple of seasons ago playing for my county, Kent, in England. He was an absolute delight to watch. So the chairman of Kenya Creed Association is still with us, Jimmy. Rianni, uh, Jimmy, I tell you, you've got a game on your hands here. Well, it isn't it exciting, and this is what... That's a one-bounce four. <laughs> this is what we would love as organizers, that the crowd are enjoying it. They would want to come again and again. It's just marvelous from the point of view from Kenya Cricket Association. Two steps down the wicket from Ranatunga and... Malik is deposited well over the boundary ropes. And here comes another one. Is it going to beat the field? Answer, yes. Down through the mid-wicket area for the left-hander. Sweeping down towards the players' enclosure. And the youngsters here today are really enjoying this. As if they haven't seen enough of this all day. We had the 100 scored off 40 balls before. And here he goes again. And that's a bigger one. That is a long way back. Russell Tiffin tells you how far back it went. Six runs. Well, Selim Malik is now thankful that his over is up. 15 gone. One, two, two for four. So there we are. 8.1. And remember, at this stage, in the Pakistan innings, young Saad... Afridi was there and uh, he was in a blistering form at this moment so these two fellows really are moving things along so Mushtaq the silver gets the single the silver gets also his 50 that's a good innings did well his captain applauds him so do his uh, his compatriots on the balcony they also applaud him Good 50 for him. Coming off 34 balls. Eight fours and two sixes. Blistering pace, isn't it? My word. Oh, he's got the thickest of edges, but it's gone roaring down there for four runs. And that brings up his 50. And also brings up the 150 as well. So, Ponatunga gets his 50. Sri Lanka get 150 off of 20 overs. A loud appeal, back from walks. And the young man has had the break that Pakistan wanted. And the captain, Aravindam Aruna Ranatunga, has gone. Look at this, and this is really sharp indeed. Up it goes. Moyen Khan takes it quite comfortably in the end as it pops up. And Ranatunga not waiting for the umpire's decision. He goes for 52, and Sri Lanka 151 for five. Shantili Karatni coming in at number seven for Sri Lanka. Pretty useful man to have coming in this low down. Two centuries, nine fifties to his name. Highest score of 104 against the West Indies in Bombay some three years ago. 
the experienced individual coming in to replace his captain Arjuna Ranatunga who got a glove onto this Moen Khan taking the catch and something tells me it's Shahid Afridi's day Arjuna Ranatunga have uh, rescued the inning somewhat they've got to keep going 290 is their target even though that won't win them the game it might get them through to the final that's a mystic shout from uh, Afridi ends the over 152 for 5 from 21 bowled him round his legs big turn from Saclane as Tilla Karatni tried to sweep that backward of square he's furious with himself but Saclane gets the important breakthrough that's the last of Sri Lanka's recognised batsmen in the pavilion Dra dragged it on dragged it on I think just rolled off his uh, arm after he played the shot Bold Mushtak for three Tilly Karatni Sri Lanka won 60 for six from 24 <laughs> Kumar Dharmasena in at number eight for Sri Lanka 41 matches good experience a good average as well in the mid 20s one half century and that scored against Pakistan in uh, Singapore recently and this is the four of Myanmar looking to sweep just played a little bit early and got a glove onto leg stump bowled round his legs Anshan Myanmar and extreme delight for Saklane is a huge one 9.4 runs per over they'll have to get if they have to reach that target pulled away by De Silva in the gap between square leg and mid wicket and again a lovely piece of fielding by Ijaz Ahmed that really was good one handed remember this is not the easiest ground in the world to field on lots of bounce and uh, have a look at that taken away down to the mid wicket area a lot of ground to make up still not in screen here he comes and a really good piece of one-handed fielding I can tell you that's exactly what happened at the end of it and that was a superb piece of fielding end of the 30s over 20 to go 182 for six I think uh, one looks at the scorecard you can you will see that there was a huge partnership to Silva and his captain Ranatunga that was very very important indeed Ranatunga going along at a fast rate and it's 52 or 46 and the silver doing the same and they got some respectability into the total because they came together when the score was 27 with four wickets down and uh, they took it long to 151 so there we are the players now enjoying a drink and gets that put right way around that that goes down to the long on boundary and that's the 200 up that uh, magical figure he's played very sensibly that must say, as he did in the game against South Africa Well, there we are. That uh, single out there through to the cover boundary. There's one run. That brings up the 50 partnership. So 14 overs left. Sri Lanka need 80 to get into the final. But he's put across. Played that on the onside. That's going to beat the field. Four glorious runs there from uh, Dharmashina. Great, great shot. Well, he seems to be rising to the occasion, Dharmasena. You were talking about his temperament a little earlier, and this is beautifully put away. Yunus looking for the Yorker, but Dharmasena converting that into a half volley and finding the gap on the onside. Oh, and he's got that one away too. That was a little short, picked it up very quickly. Fielded though, well fielded down there. A lot of ground happened to be made through the mid-wicket area to recover that. 31, 37 overs gone, 2-2-1 two, two, for 6. So just 50 runs required now. Long. I'm looking at that, aren't I? It's 150 runs to equal that to 371. 
get my mathematics back together again immediately and say it's uh, 69 required. Pulled away, picks up anything short so quickly, Aravinda. As, the, as uh, Saeed tried to push that through quickly, he just dragged it down and Aravinda slapped it through mid-wicket for four. It has been a marvellous uh, inning from uh, De Silva so far. And Sri Lankans must be waiting for him to get a big total on the board. It's lofted high, hard and handsome for six. And this is the point, Salim Malik bowling this 44th over when Waka Yunis should be bowling it really. Ramasina, the man with the uh, lofted on drive. That's it! Just wide of uh, the diving Mahmood. End of the 44th over, 2.57 for six, Sri Lanka. That's a hundred partnership. What a marvellous effort between the Silver and Damasena. Magnificent performance by these two. Hundred runs. Been calm, cool and collected. It's 40 minutes it's taken them and 127 balls. Got to be very close. It's going down. Good decision by Russell Tiffin to uh, get an LBW there. You fall in from that wide on the return crease. You have to turn the ball. And um, this didn't. So, what have we got on the on the leg side, on the onside? Just a short mid-wicket, a fine leg and a deep backward square. And also a very deep mid-wicket as well. Oh, he could have gone. Umpire hasn't given him. He's waiting for the box. We're going to see it. So Ian Robinson didn't give it on the initial stages. The Pakistanis say we've got him. Big swing, off balance, gets back in, back down. All that is tight. And that could be very close indeed. It could be a frame for frame out. This could be. And remember that you're seeing this at... 25 frames per second this goes through so difficult remember the line the line belongs to the weak keeper and i don't believe he can give that because it's why well, they giving him out well he's giving it out now that does cause a little bit of surprise because uh, at that moment you couldn't see the wicket being broken and uh, he's given it the third umpire so aravinda de silva is gone for 122 a fine knot by him, in fact not just a fine knot, an absolute responsible piece of batting by Aravinda de Silva, the Sri Lankan vice-captain, and Sri Lanka are 270 for seven, just 20 runs required. Chaminda Vaas, an average of 16.4, being get his 16, I'll be very happy, will Sri Lanka? needing 20 runs to uh, qualify for the final. His highest score was 33. And uh, this is why he's there. Now, this ball goes through. Big swing by Ar Aravinda de Silva. Up it goes. Down, back, down, and keeper all in the same movement. And that is exceptionally difficult to give. So therefore, the umpire, Mr. Ian Robinson, calls for the third umpire to make that decision for him. And he gave it out. He's out. Chipped it to cover off the leading edge. Damasena has fallen to Saclain. Congratulations all round. And Damasena is distraught. Looking to work it on the onside. Just the leading edge and pops up. 
to say Danwa, the captain at extra cover and Dharmasena goes for 51 279 for 8 Sri Lanka two games not much of an average and I think he's gone first ball stump first ball Saklane saw him coming fired it wide of off stump and uh, really that was not the most sensible piece of batting from Murlitheran he must have seen the ball turning all day it turned when he bowled so there's no reason to suspect that it stopped turning and uh, you have to have a look before you do this sort of thing and hopelessly stranded Muralitharan as Moen uproots the stumps first ball Muralitharan goes 279 for 9 will see Sri Lanka in the final. A wicket will see Pakistan there. Bowl in. The Yorker round the wicket. Wakar Yunis has done it for Pakistan in the most amazing of circumstances. Chaminda Vas having hit him for a six and a four was defeated by the uh, toe searching Yorker and Pakistan will play South Africa in the final on Sunday you couldn't ask for a better or more perfectly placed delivery and Wakar knows his arm aloft in triumph is hoisted aloft by Ijaz and the rest of his teammates Mendevas bowled off the uh, penultimate delivery of the game. He's not a happy bunny. Absolutely extraordinary game of cricket here at the Nairobi Jim Khanna. Sees Pakistan win the match and get through to the final on a faster or better net run rate congratulations all out all round from uh, Sri Lankans to Pakistanis Ranatunga there and uh, Dav Watmore the coach the Pakistan flag fluttering proudly in uh, the evening light earlier on in the day Pakistan made a mammoth 371 for nine Afridi the uh, man of the innings 102 from just 40 balls the captain Saeed Anwar got 100 at almost a runner ball and was somewhat overshadowed by Afridi on his in his debut innings for Pakistan scored the quickest century in one day international history magnificent performance that partnership of 126 highlighting the uh, partnerships for Pakistan the Sri Lankan bowlers well they suffered John Saraya 3 for 94 and Muralipuram 2 for 73 were uh, really expensive somebody's got to go for runs when uh, the side scores 371 against you and that meant that Sri Lanka needed uh, 372 to win the game but more importantly they needed 290 to uh, beat Pakistan on a better net run rate and look at that 289 all out one run short of what would have turned total that would have taken them to the final and all out of the uh, fifth ball of the last over 
Waka Yunis, magnificent. Ending Vass and Sri Lanka's innings with a searing Yorker. Five wickets to Yunis, four to Saklane, and the two key bowlers for Pakistan really showed their worth. Marvellous effort from De Silva, 122.